Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, let's magnify the name of the Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you as you return to your seats. What a great weekend this has been. What a great three days. And uh, I want to say, first of all, to Brother and Sister Poitras, we love them very, very much. Brother and Sister Poitras, would you please stand? Jim and Linda Poitras. Hallelujah. They've expressed thanks to a lot of people. But under their leadership, they have allowed people to do this. They haven't done it all, but they have allowed people to have a vision and to work with it. And I thank the Lord for that. Let's give Brother and Sister Poitras another round of applause. God bless Brother and Sister Poitras. Praise God. God bless them richly. And I want to honor Brother and Sister Shirley, who served in this position before they did. And I thank the Lord for the vision that they had. Some of these things began in the vision of Brother and Sister Shirley. Would you all stand, Brother and Sister Shirley? They were over uh, the Director of Education and AIM for many years. God bless them. Brother and Sister Rodenbush as well served in this position. Would you all stand? Praise God. Don't we love our elders? And uh, I guess I be one now. Hallelujah. I guess I am getting to that age, but uh, God bless you. We love you so much. And Angie, where's Angie? God bless Angie. She's probably out. There you are, Angie. We love you. Appreciate you. And all the team, God bless you. We love them all so very much. And, and we're so very thankful for all of you that have made the sacrifice to come. I know that this has been a sacrifice, and we want to thank you for coming to be part of Global Connections. I don't believe that you're going to leave the way that you came. I don't believe you're going to leave here the way that you came. I believe that we leave with a clear understanding of what God wants to do in our lives. Can you say, amen? excuse me, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if my eldest daughter was here... She would say, I have to do it two more times before I quit. Hallelujah. Uh, sneezes at least. But uh, it is just so great to be part of the kingdom of God. And uh, I thank the Lord for the opportunity to minister for just a few moments. I'm not going to preach long, but I do feel that God has given me something today. And uh, I want God to minister to us. I'm going to give each one of you something in a moment that you'll be able to take back with you. It's nothing expensive, but it is something that I believe God gave me for right now. And we want to commission you to go. And we want God to use you wherever you are. Can you say amen? And uh, you've got to be determined. It's more than just a moment of emotion in the altar. I said it's more than just a moment of emotion these last three days. We have to make a decision right now that we leave with what we are going to do. And you know what? The devil is not happy. I said the devil is not happy. And he's going to do everything he can to try and stop you. But I've got a message for you right now. Would you stand with me? And we're going to read in the Word of God in Luke chapter 13 and reading verses uh, 31 through 33. Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 33. It's great to be with our team, brother and sister Sladen. Thank you for being here, brother Abernathy. God bless brother Abernathy. Thank you, brother Abernathy. I know some of us have to literally leave here and go straight to the airport. I'm going to Toronto, Canada. I think you're going to Florida. Hallelujah. I'll enjoy the snow and you enjoy the sand. Hallelujah. But uh, God bless you. And then also it's great to have the regional directors. Some have had to slip out. They're having to leave. Brother Sean, for example, just one example, came back from the field 55 hours. It was a long drive, but we're glad you made it. Hallelujah. And uh, we appreciate our regional directors and missionaries that are here. May God bless you. Don't you love Jesus? Don't you love Jesus? And uh, this has been such a great time. I'm so honored. I apologize. I missed the first part this morning, but you'll see in a moment I had to, I needed to go buy something that I'd forgotten about, and they didn't know until 10 o'clock. I apologize for being late. Please forgive me. Hallelujah. And uh, God bless you. Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 33. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. 
And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And for just a few moments this afternoon, really a very, I mean, I'll preach as long as the Holy Ghost tells me to, but uh, I just simply want to preach on this thought. Nevertheless, you see this? Nevertheless, you see this, and you'll understand before I'm finished what this is all about. Lord, we love you today, and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And I pray, Lord, that you will bless and that you will anoint each and every one of us. God, I thank you for the call that you have placed on the lives of people that are here today. And I pray, God, that they will leave right now with a determination, not just an emotion, but they will have a determination and it will be a, a reason that they have in their mind now. Now, according to circumstances, it may seem impossible, but God, I pray right now that you will let them know that the call that you have placed upon their life. You're going to fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Before you're seated, take somebody's hand and say nevertheless, and you may be seated. Praise God. You know, my mind goes back, Brother Shirley, to the first time in Brother Rodenbush that, that uh, I felt the call of God in my life. It was on a missions trip. I was dean of Christian education at a Bible college, and I made a trip with a group of students, and God called us on that trip in 1977. And I love to tell this story because I made application, Brother Linder, and I'm glad to tell you, hallelujah, I met the board, and the board turned me down. I'm the general director of Global Missions. Can you imagine they did not know what they were doing when they turned me down? Well, I think they did know what they were doing because it was all part of the call of God. I remember after that, I wanted to go to El Salvador, and I remember when Brother Lehman, Paul Lehman, called me and said, would you consider going to Panama? And I remember there was an ice storm in Jackson, Mississippi, and we were at home that day on McDowell Circle, and, and I prayed, and then Sister Rodenbush, I heard the voice of God say, El Salvador, and I called him back, Brother Cooney, and I said, no, I don't want to go to Panama. I don't feel it's God's will. I want to go to El Salvador. And then I got to El Salvador, and two weeks later, the missionary, they called me and said, would you go to Guatemala, Sister Lynn? And I know it's a beautiful country, but it wasn't God's will for me to go as a missionary to Guatemala. And I said, sorry, I feel it's God's will for me to stay in El Salvador. But you know what? It wasn't without trials, and it wasn't without tribulation. I remember the night that I got my children for the first time in El Salvador, Jared, who will be 42 next month, and my daughter Leah, who is 40. I remember when I heard the bombs going off and the bullets flying through the air, and the enemy began to tell me, your children are going to lose their life, and you're not going to make it. You know what? I've got news for you. Hallelujah. You see this? You'll understand it in a moment. Hallelujah. I've got news for you. God is with you. I'm preaching to somebody today. Haven't we felt the presence of God? I said, haven't we felt the presence of God? How many of you have had a God moment? Really, have you had a God moment? If you have, will you at least wave your hand or, or move a foot or do something? Hallelujah. We've had a God moment here. But I come to tell you right now, a God moment is more than just weeping in the altar. A God moment is going to be when you step your foot on the place that God has called you to go. It's going to be the day like the first time I preached on October the 25th, 1981 or 80 in El Salvador. I preached my first Spanish message in a place called Congo. And you know what happened that day? God filled 100 people with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you want me to come up here and act like some big highfalutin executive and not worship God? I've come to tell you, you see this, I'm not turning around. I said, I'm not turning around. We're going to keep on pressing on. Can you say praise God? 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's raise our hands and magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know folks back there in the media place, I'm completely off my notes. I've not preached hardly anything except the scripture, but I'm in the Holy Ghost because the enemy has battled me today. Hallelujah, the situation I'm going through has been one of those days. But you know what? I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. I've got news for you. There ain't no turning back. I said, I've got news for you. There's no turning back. Don't you just leave here today with a wet handkerchief, but you leave with a determination that you're going to make it to the country of your calling. You're going to make it to the place that God has called you to go to. Don't you give up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Then I remember, sweetheart, when we were buying our furniture there, I still remember it on Boulevard uh, uh, Roosevelt. How, uh, there by the El Salvador del Mundo when the dog bit Leah and we had to get rabies shots. We had to have them flown in. And thank God for your mother that worked for a law firm in Jackson, Mississippi, and we got them. The devil tried to turn us around. And then my wife started running a fever and she had hepatitis and she had t- typhoid and she had malaria all at the same time and they said you got to go back and we came back to Jackson but you know what we called out upon a name I said we called out upon a name and it wasn't the medical center of Mississippi it was not Dr. Smith in a clinic it was the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I said it was the name of the Lord Jesus Christ You see this? Hallelujah, there's no turning around. I said there's no turning around, and the enemy's going to try and stop you. But I'll never forget when Dr. Stevenson, we went back to the doctor. He said, I don't know what's happened, but there's no hepatitis. I don't know what's happened. There's no typhoid. I don't know what's happened. There is no malaria. Something has happened. And for 20 years, she wore glasses at that time, and she wears them again. That's just part of us being 49, sweetie. I mean 39, sorry. Hallelujah. That's just part of it. But for 20 years, when God healed her of those three things, God touched her eyes, and for 20 years, she didn't wear a pair of glasses. And you want me to act like a bump on a log today? You want me to up like that that I've come to tell you? I've got a reason to praise God. I've got a reason to rejoice. Because you know what? There's no turning back. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I wish I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to preach a long time. Hallelujah. But I I just wish, you may be seated, you may be seated. I wish you could have been in the house when the missile came through the wall. And my girls cried and said, Daddy, are we going to die? I didn't know, but I said, it's going to be okay. Sweetheart, I've come to tell you today, it's going to be okay. I said, it's going to be okay. Hallelujah, it's going to be okay. I said it's going to be okay. Hallelujah, come on somebody. You ought to praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then I remember as we got out, had to put ketchup on somebody. Brother Slade, you remember, we had to put ketchup on one of the girls, and we got out of the house with a little white flag, and I begged the soldiers uh, to quit shooting till we could get out, and I lost my girls, and etc. But you know what? We found them, and everything's all right. Then I remember when they tried to kidnap our kids. I remember when they tried to kidnap my daughter, and they told us to leave. You see this? I said, you see this? Don't you tell me there's not enough power for you. Don't you tell me that there's not victory for you. I've come to tell you today, nevertheless. Nevertheless. 
Hallelujah. The scripture that we've read today, the Bible tells us, hallelujah, Jesus says in Luke chapter 13 and verse 33, the Bible says in the scripture, we find that a certain Pharisee came and told Jesus that Herod wanted to kill him and they, that they were going to do something with Jesus and he needed to flee. If not, then he was going to suffer at the hands of Herod. Would you listen to me today? Day. You're going to leave here in just a few moments, and the devil is going to tell you all that bunch of stuff you felt doesn't mean a thing. All that stuff that you felt, you're just going to go back to the mundane and what's going on. But I've got news for you. We need to join our voice with the voice of Jesus. I said, you need to join your voice with the voice of Jesus. The enemy is going to tell you, just go back to doing the same old thing you've always done. Just go back to saying you can't do it. Just go back to saying, I've got to do this or that or the other. But God has given me this message today for you. I said, God has given me this message today for you. You need to join your voice with the voice of Jesus. You know what Jesus said? Come on, let's look at it. Jesus, the Bible says, after he heard that, he said, nevertheless, I must walk today, tomorrow, and the day following. You're not going to turn me around, Herod. You're not going to turn me around, Herod. Come on, somebody. Is the enemy going to turn you around, or are you going to keep on pressing forward? It was remarkable language. So very expressive of the successive steps of his work yet remaining. His words demonstrated the calm deliberateness with which he meant to go through with every step and after another to the very last. He was unmoved by Herod's threats. I come to you today, don't you be moved by what reason may tell you. Don't you be moved by the number that you have in your region, Brother Sham, I've come to tell you, come on, let's keep on preaching in Asia. Come on, let's preach, keep on preaching in Europe and the Mideast. Come on, let's keep on preaching in the Pacific. Come on, let's keep on preaching in Central America and South America. Come on, let's keep on preaching in Africa. Brother and Sister Cooney, I know it's not easy in Ireland, but you keep on preaching the Word of God. I said keep on preaching the Word of God. Don't you turn around. But the Bible says that Jesus looked at them and said, I want you to know I'm not turning around. I'm not going back. And I've come to tell you today, you see this? You'll understand it in just a moment. Hallelujah. You see this. Hallelujah. He was unmoved by Herod's threats. But now, the rapid march with which they were now hastening to complete all of the things that were going to happen. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 37, the Bible says, For I say unto you that this that is written yet must be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concern me have an end. For it cannot be that a prophet preach perish out of Jerusalem. Awful severity of satire upon this bloody city. His seeks to kill me, does he? He seeks to kill me, does he? Hallelujah. Ah, I am out of Herod's jurisdiction. He seeks to stop me, does he? Well, I just want you to go tell him. What did he call him? He said, go tell that fox that his threats do not bother me. The dead are raised. The blind see. The halt are healed. Because I've got news for you. I'm not turning around. I know there's some rough things that wait. I know there's some difficult things that await me. I know that things may not go the way I think it ought to go. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, sweetheart. Nevertheless, I've got news for everybody here. We're not turning around. I said we're not turning around. We're going to keep on preaching the word of God. Come on, AYCers from El Salvador, where are you? Where's the AYCers from El Salvador? Give me a shout out. Where are the Sri Lankan folks that I was with in Sri Lanka? Shout out. 
Hallelujah. Where are the global connections, folks? Give me a shout out. You're going to go back home and somebody's going to say, it's just another emotion. But would you do me a favor? Would you say, yes, I know it was just another meeting. What? I can't hear you. Nevertheless, you just watch what's going to happen. Nevertheless, you just watch what's going to happen. Come on, somebody ought to worship God right now. I said somebody ought to praise the name of the Lord right now. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may be seated. Go tell him, I neither fly from him nor fear him. But Jerusalem has ever been and is once more to become the prophet's slaughterhouse. I know that rough things await me. I know that rough things await me. I can't hear you. I know that rough things await me. Come on, shout it out. Nevertheless. Hallelujah, I won't know he wants to kill me. I can't hear you. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, I know that they say you can't do it. I can't hear you. Hallelujah, I know you don't have the money to do it. I know that I don't have all the PIMs like you have. I don't have the education that Brother Bernard has. I don't have the money that Brother Linder has. That's probably not true. Hallelujah. He gives it all to Global Missions. Hallelujah. You know what? I mentioned it last night when I was in Bible college. I thought, how in the world can I do anything? I don't have a pedigree. Nobody knows who I am. But you know what I said? Nevertheless. You know what? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, sweetheart. Nevertheless, I'm going to magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I'm not turning around. Come on. Does somebody feel that way today? Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. Nevertheless, I will push forward and will not run. I know it means sacrifice, but in the end there is victory. In order for us to have victory in fulfilling our call, we must have the same nevertheless mentality. Please, I beg you, do not leave here with just a memory of the beautiful music. And thank you, Sister Payne, but it's more than beautiful music. It's more than just a beautiful sermonette and a nice bosquejo, as we say in Spanish. I think that's, I don't know what that is in English. Hallelujah. What is it? An outline. Thank you, Sister. Who said that outline? Uh, Sister Crossley. Thank you, Brother Crossley, whatever. A nice outline. Come on, folks. Enough of nice outlines. I said, and I'm not against getting up acting like an idiot and doing bad stuff. But you know what? We need a touch of the Holy Ghost. I said, we need a move of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We live in a world, an evangelical world, and even a Pentecostal world that's affected by some false thinking. That's all easy. Just make a wish and it will happen. The idea of paying a price seems not to be the popular thinking these days. We want to know if there's a work to be done, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? And I hate to admit this, but there's some people that call and say, I want to be a missionary. How much money can you give us? I'm sorry, folks. Yes, we've got money in the bank, but it belongs to the missionaries. They raised it. I said they raised it. Hallelujah. I'm not going to give you how much, but it's a lot that's in the bank. It all belongs to the missionaries. I think we have maybe one milla, whatever, hallelujah, in administration. Stay right on deficit all the time. Praise God. But the money we have, yes, we've got more money than anybody else, but it belongs to the missionaries. Why? Because that's what this is all about. We're not here to come and tell you what to do. We're here to facilitate you for your call to go where you want to go. 
I said we're here to facilitate you. Yes, there's some rules and stuff, but I want you to know we want you to fulfill your call. I want you to fulfill your call. Did you know that? I really do. I want you to fulfill your call. I want you to be able to go where God has called you to do. And I give my word that we'll do everything we can to help you. I mean that with all of my heart. But you know what? You've got to have a nevertheless mentality. You've got to say, Lord, I don't feel like shouting. I don't feel like shouting. But watch me. You don't understand what I'm going to say right now. Hallelujah. But today has been one of those days for me. It's been one of the days that I've wanted to cry all day. It's been one of those days, and I'll tell you in a moment what's going on. But it's been one of those days, Sister Payne, I'm sorry, when I talked about the music and I started crying. It's been one of those until right before I came up here, I did not think I was going to be able to minister without crying. But you know what? I want you to know, and I want the devil to see. You see this? You see this? There ain't no turning around. I said, you see this? I'm not stopping because we've seen too much to turn around. I said, we've seen too much to turn around. I've not bowed my head in sorrow. Yes, I'll go through emotions, but I've come to tell you, God is with you. Come on, folks. I wish I was your age again. I wish I was your age again. I've seen over 500,000 people filled with the Holy Ghost with my eyes. With these eyes, I have seen over 500,000. But you know what? Jesus has given us a little more time. And some of you are going to see, that's gonna, what you're going to see is nothing compared to what I've seen. It's going to be a million or two million or three million. Well, somebody believes it. I said, somebody believes it. You need to get a nevertheless mentality. I said, you need to get a nevertheless mentality. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Be seated. You've heard a lot of statistics, but can I give you a couple? I thank God, hallelujah, that in the last 17 years, and, and some of that, Brother Shirley and Brother Rodenbush, when I came in, was the number of countries like in Leeward Islands and the Windward Islands. We went, it was 146 then, but Brother Sism considered Leeward and Windward Islands, and there were several nations as one. Some of that was maybe five or ten. But besides those, I'm glad to report to you that in the last 17 years, I'm getting ready to run. Hallelujah. I said, I'm getting ready to run. When I became director, when I was elected Brother Rodenbush, I sat there in that general conference at Louisville, and I felt like a Mack truck had run over me. I thought, how in God's name can I do what's expected? But I want you to know, nevertheless, I said, nevertheless, I kept on preaching, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. I kept preaching, if it can happen in El Salvador, it can happen in Ireland. I said, it can happen in Europe and the Middle East, Brother Tuttle. It can happen in Latvia, Ames, hallelujah, Amy and Elliot, hallelujah. Did you know there's an Amy and an Elliot and a Dennis over here? You all want to see Elliot? You may be seated. Elliot, no, I'm sorry. She doesn't want me to do it. She's going to have a baby. It's due a week from today, my birthday. Hallelujah. But you know what? I thank God that in that time we have opened 70, at least 75 nations and territories in the last 17 years.
Sit there if you want to, looking at me like a mule looking at a gate. Hallelujah. But I've got news for you. I've got a right to praise God because, yes, we've had some problems. I said, yes, we've had some problems. Nevertheless, nevertheless, let's raise our hands and magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My next scripture, you may be seated. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Verse 18. But if not... I said, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us, but if he doesn't, nevertheless, I said, nevertheless, we're going to keep on praising him. I said we're going to keep on praising him. People have been martyred in Colombia, Salvador, and other countries, Asia, and all parts of the world. Right now, there are 90,000 Christians that will be killed this year alone because of persecution. Families have cast their loved ones out because of Jesus' name message. Oh, yes, great victories. Dead people raised. 4,000 filled with the Holy Ghost in Pakistan. We saw in El Salvador... uh, uh, Tia talked about it. Over almost 4,000 people filled with the Holy Ghost in one day. Called heretics. Churches burned. I preached in El Salvador when they would stone the churches. Brother Slayton, you've been there. And they would stone the churches as we were preaching. But you know what? I can't hear you. Hallelujah. When you get back home, somebody's going to tell you, What were you smoking in St. Louis? Tell them we were not smoking marijuana. Hallelujah. And I've never smoked it, and I don't know what it does to you. Hallelujah. But I want you to know you just need to look at them and be very respectful and say, nevertheless, you just wait and see. (laughs) Nevertheless, you just wait and see. Would you raise your hands and talk to God right now? Hallelujah. I don't know what your circumstances are, but I know God is able to touch and God is able to supply that need right now. We love you, Jesus. 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 Thank you for being part of the United Pentecostal Church International. I think it's the greatest organization in the world. And I mean that with all of my heart. It's not perfect. We have things that we are trying to work on. But I thank you for loving the doctrine that our God is one. I thank you for the labor that you're involved in. But I want you to know today, hallelujah, we've got a job to do. There's a burden that I come here today with. I wish I could tell you there's no nevertheless. But there is a nevertheless. There will be things that will come your way. And you've got to decide that you're going to press forward. And it won't be just a memory. It will be a decision that you make right now about what you're going to do with the future of your life. And God spoke to me about this. I'm asking every one of you right now to make a decision on concrete things that you are going to do when you leave here. Yes, we're going to worship. Yes, we're going to dance. Yes, we're going to shout. But yes, I am going to go on AYC. Yes, I'm going to go on next steps. Yes, I'm going to go on aim. And if it's not God's will for you to go overseas, go home and be the best saint your pastor has ever had. I said, go home and pay your tithes. Go home and take on some PIMs and help your church. I said, go home and get your pretty little hand in the commode and clean it for your pastor. 
Now, maybe some of you never did that, but that's the way Mama taught me to clean the commode. And I'm not too good to do it. Some of you may be. Use a brush then. Hallelujah. (laughs) But do something. Come on, do something. Don't you dare leave here and not do anything. Leave this place with a nevertheless mentality. In the name of Jesus, I thank God that I'm here today. You know why? Because of some pretty girls that invited me to church. And they didn't ask me out on a date. I kind of thought that's what they were doing. But they took me to church. And that night, Brother Rodenbush in Heron, Illinois, I repented of my sins. I was baptized in Jesus' name. And here I am 51 years later. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Nevertheless, nevertheless, hallelujah. I've got a burden here today because I come to remind us of a lost world. I come to remind us today of the countries where we have no works. Please, if you've got the slide ready. And I'm probably going to crucify some of the pronunciations. But Comoros, Djibouti, Eritrea, the Gambia. But I've got news for you on the Gambia. I just got an email from Brother and Sister Sully. They're going into Gambia right now. And it looks like we're opening a church there. (laughs) Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't, is that Mayote? Is that how that, is that Mayote or Mayote? In Mayote, I'm going to do Spanish pronunciation. Sao Tome and Principe. Western Sahara, that is all in Africa. Afghanistan, North Korea, Maldives. San Marino, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, French Polynesia, Marshall Islands, and Nauru. Is that right, Nauru? In the Pacific, I want you to know, thank God, 210 nations in the world. We now have churches, and what with the Gambia, it will be 195 nations. When I began to talk about this, you all know Brother Rodenbush, Brother Shirley. Some people probably thought I'd been smoking something. Well, I don't know if I'd been smoking something, but I was definitely drinking something. It's called the new wine. Hallelujah. 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 And there's six other countries, Brother Tuttle, that we've had works in. And you inform me that those are places that we need to get back in. We had a work in Albania, Algeria, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Liechtenstein, and Tunisia, Brother Parker. I just asked Brother Slayton how much money we had in the open door fund, and I may get in trouble for what I'm about to do, but Brother Tuttle, I want you to know we're going to give you $10,000 for every one of those countries. It's not for people to take a vacation. It's not for people to go over there and just tour around. But it's for us this year to see somebody once again in those countries, to look the people. $10,000 for each one of those countries. In Jesus' name. The Lord spoke to me about this a few days ago, but I've got news for you. Hallelujah. No, I know we don't have anybody there. We don't know what happened to them. What? Nevertheless, we're not sitting down. Come on, Brother Parker. Let's get back into Tunisia in the name of Jesus. I said, come on. We can do it. And don't tell me you don't have money. You got 10,000 bucks to do it. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. I'm about to come to a close. Jesus said this cup is bitter, does not taste good. Nevertheless, I will drink it. This prayer is not easy. My disciples are asleep. Nevertheless, I'm going to keep on praying. What temptations the devil are throwing at me, the Lord said when he was on the mount. But he said, nevertheless. Hallelujah. This beating hurts. Nevertheless. This crown of thorns hurts. Nevertheless, because you see, the nevertheless that Jesus said purchased victory over sin, salvation for all of those faces we saw. Power in prayer and in his name, deliverance from the vices of sin, 
healing for sickness, and dominion over demons. As I conclude, I want you to come and pass out what I've got for everybody, please, those that are ready. Hallelujah. Please, let's not leave here. And I hope you've got a new song. I mean, these were great songs. Did you write some of those songs? Two of them. Great. Take them home and sing them. But would you please take something home besides a song? You understand what I'm saying, Sister Payne. Please take something home besides a new worship chorus. I said, let's leave here today. And I'm probably preaching to myself more than I am anybody else. And I'll explain it in just a moment. But I want you to know, come on, what are you going to do? Can I come and ask you, and would you say it in the microphone? Everybody is sweating gumdrops right now. What are you going to do? What concrete are you going to do when you get back home? I'm not going to make you do that. Hallelujah. But please, would you just decide what you're going to do? I'm handing a handkerchief out to you, and it says on it, you see this? You see this. And I'm going to tell you a testimony about what happened in Africa several years ago with a missionary who has now passed off the scene, and that's Brother Eichard. That's my son-in-law's uncle, the tall guy right there. Brother Eichard, let, let, me let, you get the, let me let you get the handkerchief first. But you know what? You've got to be determined. What are you going to do when you get back? What are you going to do? Where am I going to see you overseas? Philippines. Where am I going to see you? Africa. Where? Come on. Where? Japan. Where else? Malta. I know I'm going to see you. We know that. Hallelujah. We better. You'll be in trouble. Hallelujah. Where, where am I going to? Where? Burkina Faso. Sweden. Hallelujah. Come on. Where? Afghanistan. You know how long I pray for Afghanistan? I call that country every day praying that God would reach out and send someone. Son, listen to me. If you go to Afghanistan, you may not come back alive. You may come back in a casket. But are you willing to say, nevertheless? Nevertheless, I'm willing to do what God has called me to do. Come on, let's raise our hands and talk to the Lord right now. If you haven't received a handkerchief, just they're coming right now to hand you one. I want everybody to have one. I want everybody to have. You all have handkerchiefs up here? Hallelujah. Could you give me just a second? Give me just a second. Brother Eichert had a student in the Bible school. Everybody have a handkerchief? Anybody not have one, raise your hand. A student in the Bible school. This is such an awesome testimony. A student in the Bible school was saved, went to Bible school, and began to study. Word came to the young man that his mother had died. He had never been able to witness to her. And he went to Brother Eichard, and he said, Brother Eichard, would you anoint this handkerchief? I'm going to take it back to my village that was a three-day trip, and I'm going to put it on my mama. And when I do, God's going to raise her from the dead. You know what? If I'd have been the missionary, I'd have prayed for it. And I'd have thought, how can I prepare this poor kid? I mean, his mom's dead. He can't get there for three days. Folks, I don't know what the heat was like or what it was like, but I'm sure I've been, sweetheart, I'm sorry that time I tried to make you dress that dead body and put it in the casket. She remembers it. They weren't there with the dress, and I said, sweetheart, she doesn't even like to look at bodies. And El Salvador, you, this is going to be, this will not seem funny to you, but this is Salvadorian humor. Hallelujah. You look at them no matter what shape they're in. And I told her, I said, sweetheart, you're going to have to dress the lady. We're going to have to get her in the casket. I've helped put bodies in caskets when the funeral home people went out vomiting because the body was in such bad shape. But I picked him up and put him in. Hallelujah. 
nevertheless. And so he said, okay, I'll pray for it. And he prayed for it, Sister Kelly. And he took the handkerchief and he began to walk down the street. And as he walked down the street to the bus station, he said, you see this? When I put this on my mama's head, she's dead and God's going to raise her from the dead. And you know what the people said? Did he come from that crazy Pentecostal church over there? Do y'all handle snakes too? Hallelujah. (laughs) He got on the bus and he began to make his way. And he sat down beside somebody. And when he sat down beside him, he said, You see this? When I put this on my mama's head, God's going to raise her from the dead. And he rode the bus for several hours spent the night, got on another bus, and he sat down beside another guy that had kind of red hair. No, I don't know. Hallelujah. And he said, you see this? When I put this on my mama's head, God's going to raise her from the dead. Come on. Come on. What are you going to do? I said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You see this? I'm going to make it to the Philippines in the name of Jesus. I'm going to make it to Burkina Faso in the name of Jesus. I'm going to make it to Japan in the name of Jesus. You see this? There's going to be some situations. But you see this? And so, a couple of days, third day, he gets off the bus. He begins to walk down the trail to where his mama is. And he said to the neighbors that knew him, Brother Tracy, you see this? When I put it on my mama's head, God's going to raise her from the dead. And the neighbors said, sure enough, he has lost it. He got to the house, and he told his family. He said, I've never been able to talk to mom. Where is she? And he walked into the room, and he said to his family, you see this? Watch what's going to happen. And he placed it on his mom. And you know what happened? God raised his mother from the dead. I said God raised his mother from the dead. I thought it was three days. My son-in-law, Dennis, told me he thought it was five. But three or five, folks, hallelujah, I've come to tell you. I don't know what the devil, I don't know what your neighbors are going to say. I don't know what the people you're studying with are going to say. I don't know what the young people in your church are going to say. But would you do me a favor? Would you just pull this out and say, you see this? God's given me a call. And I'm not turning around. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it, sweetheart. But I can. It wasn't easy. A month ago, when we heard the doctor say, you've got ALS or Lou Gehrig's. It wasn't easy to hear them say the things that they told us. I've struggled a little. I've struggled a lot. We've been together 46 years, and I wouldn't be what I am without that lady right there. I've known you for 46 years. We were in the car together when the angels lifted our van up and we flew over the rocks. You ever heard that testimony? I have to tell you about it sometime. They literally lifted our van up and we flew over it. I was with you when Dr. Stevenson gave you the letter and said, no typhoid, no malaria. And Brother Poitras, thank you this week. People have been asking me how I'm doing. And forgive me, sweetheart. I kind of want to yell, how do you think I'm doing? How do you think I'm doing? How would you be doing? And I'd say, okay, but no more. I'm doing great. Because number one, I've been with her for 46 years, and I have never seen such faith in all my life. She's not depressed. She's not worried. Because you know what? My God is a healer. I said, my God is a healer. And sweetie, this is mine. 
And the way we've been reading those scriptures, every time we eat, we're going to keep on doing it. But every time the devil attacks me, sweetheart, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to say, you see this devil? My wife's going to be healed in the name of Jesus. My wife's going to be healed in the name of Jesus. Those of you that have oil near, would you come and anoint Diane? God, in the name of Jesus, would some of you come? Come on, I want some Global Connection folks to come over. Would you come over and gather around her right now? I want some, some of you girls. Come on in here. Let, the men, ministers are coming around, but you get in there too. Come on, I want you to pray for her. Let's take authority over this ALS right now in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, we take authority. We take authority right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sister Rodenbush, Sister Rodenbush, would you lead us in prayer, please? Oh, my God, my Savior, my healer, my Lord, in the name of Jesus. At your word, Lord, at your word, it can happen in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Let your kingdom come and your will be done, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we bring our petition to your throne today, Lord. Let it be for your glory, Lord, for your glory, for your glory that your name will be magnified and lifted up in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's raise our hands and praise God right now. I said, let's raise our hands and thank God for healing. Let's raise our hands and praise God for it right now. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Wish I could tell you about her driving the dump truck and we didn't have anybody to drive it and we were building our building. Wish I could tell you about the time she drove my 73 Land Cruiser through war-torn areas. Wish I could tell you about the times, and sweetheart, it's going to be okay. We're not turning around. We're pressing forward. I made a mistake a couple of weeks ago. Brother Woodward would be very mad at me if he heard me say this. But I was in a meeting, and I began to talk about what I was going to do. And God, forgive me. You know what I'm going to do? Where did my handkerchief go? Oh, it's in my hand. You see this? You see this? I'm not stopping until we have a church in every country of the world. I said, I'm not stopping till I see many of you coming before the Global Missions Board for a full appointment as a missionary. Brother Poitras, we're not stopping till we see the AIM applications. Sunitha, are you here? We're not stopping until you see you on an AYC trip. We're not stopping. Who's working with Next Steps? Is it going to be, I mean, is it Angie or are we going to let Laura help us? Angie. Angie, we're not stopping until we see them going on Next Steps. Do me a favor. Would you step back just a little? Don't go back to your seats. I need those with the oil to come up. You and your wives come up on the platform right here on the step. What we're going to do right now to conclude, and there may be some announcement after this, but would some of you come over here, please? I need some of you on this side. These are not anointed yet, but they're now going to be anointed. And the folks that are here are going to anoint them and pray for the cloth and pray for you. 
So if some of you would just come down this way, and I need some of you with oil, we just need to scatter out here. And we're going to anoint your cloth with oil. Now, folks, you can do whatever you want to with this. You can blow your nose on it. You can take it and do whatever you want. But you know what I'm going to do with mine? It's going in my Bible that I read every day. And the next day, can I be honest? Today, sweetheart, it's been a rough day. Because when you told me about Jaime Miron from El Salvador contacting you and telling you he wished you were there, I I miss El Salvador. Those are the people I love. But you know what? I did not think Sister Tutla could preach today. I thought I was going to cry the whole time. But you know what? You see this? God is on the throne. And God is our healer. Hallelujah. Would you please, we still need some of you over here, if you would come on this side, please, so we can kind of be scattered out. And I don't want you to leave until somebody anoints your cloth with oil and prays for you. You may not know everybody. These these are the Euchres, missionaries of Latvia. This is Brother and Sister Sladen, Brother Linder, Global Missions Board member, the Crosleys, South America, the Tuttles, Europe and the Middle East, the Parkers from, uh, from Malta, Gerilyn, oh, I'm sorry, Sister Kelly, hallelujah. Compañera de Estudios. I know you don't, hallelujah. She said she didn't understand. A fellow student that helped me in Bible school, you remember, to get through a very rough time. Brother Sean, Asia, Sister Lynn Jewett. Remember that time we were going to Lago Atitlan and I bought a hat, or I tried a hat on, and that guy looked at me and he said, that's cute, sweet sea, hallelujah. <laughs> I'll never, and she hasn't let me forget it. That's cute, sweet sea, hallelujah. <laughs> Brother and Sister Buckland from the Pacific. Brother and Sister Shirley who were my leaders that helped me get through some of the roughest times I had in El Salvador. I only tell you about all the revival. I don't tell you about all the problems I caused. Hallelujah. But they bailed me out. Brother Tracy, love Brother Tracy, my pastor, and he used to be also in global missions. Hallelujah. My pastor's taken such good care of us. Now he's bishop. Hallelujah. Sister Poitras and Brother Poitras, some of the greatest people you ever want to work with. Brother and Sister Cooney, in Ireland. I have not been to Ireland, and I'm coming to Ireland. You have not invited me. No, I'm teasing you. You have. Hallelujah. Brother and Sister Rodenbush, I preached my first message in his church when I was 14. In fact, I gave my first Bible to my daughter when she was commissioned, and I found my notes in that Bible. I preached on January the 2nd, 1968. Hallelujah. In his church. Brother Scott and Sister Sunitha. You know what? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I commission you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to not turn to the right nor to the left. I commission you to preach the Word of God. Acts 2.38 Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I commission you that when times get rough, you're going to remember this and you're going to say, you see this, devil? I'm not turning around. I commission you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Now, would you please move forward? And after your cloth is anointed, if you'll just return to your seat, let them anoint your cloth and anoint you now in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray for everyone right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.